couple of hours time when it's you know when we're when we're coming out with the kit on and everything. That's when it'll really hit us. And the preparations, everything gone to plan, no problems, no injuries, no worries. No, no worries. Just uh, once again, it's been very hard for the side. You know, they all deserve a shirt today. Unfortunately, that's you know that's that's football, and uh, I think I picked the right side today that will win the trophy. The side that, as you say, it's going to do the job. Yes, that's right. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure we'll hear today. Nicky, chatting to one or two of the lads, there seems to be a lot of nerves in the side at the moment. Yeah, I think so. You know, coming here and seeing all the support and whatnot, it's, um, I think it's beginning to sink in. But uh, the pitching so frightening is what I thought it would be. Seeing the, the youngsters on there, um, it's not quite as big as we originally thought. So uh, I think now the adrenaline's pumping, you know, and um, just want to get on with it, really. Yourself and Alex, and of course Taffy, have got a major job to try and uh, calm the lads down a bit, but you can't have a more confident manager than that one, surely? No, Alex, uh, Alex is very confident, and me and Strong are as well and, and you try and pump the other lads up because they've all got a bit of doubt in their minds um, and if they if they can see you being positive all the time I think it helps you know I, I, like I said to you before I don't think guys are anything to be frightened of um, they're only they're only uh, a side that's probably plays at a little bit higher standard than ourselves but um, we're, we're our side's good enough to play at southern league level and on you know with this support I'm sure on the day we'll certainly give them a good game hopefully walk off with a trophy <laughs> Well, all the talking's over. We're here at Wembley Stadium and, of course, Wimborne Town will be kicking off in the 1992 FA Vars. An amazing situation they've found themselves in. The players are here. We've had the trip in on the coach and everything is looking rosy. The Wimborne supporters looking forward to their afternoon out as well. Resplendent in their black and white, whether it be scarves, T-shirts or whatever. The schoolboys, well, they're having their match at the moment, a special day for them. And looking on, the Wimborne Town players players looking and thinking to themselves well that'll be us come three o'clock be a few more people in the stadium everybody will be ready for the big kickoff and who's going to win it that's the big question Now with both teams out on the pitch for their final warm-up, Alex Pike puts Wimborne through their paces. You already know how the Southern team got here, but here's Dave Child again with the highlights of Geisley's route to Wembley. Wimborne Town's opponents for the 1992 FA Vols final were the holders Geisley. They started off in style with a semi-final against Sudbury Town. They were ahead of their Nethermore ground. Pretty early on, the goal scorer was the number 11, Billy Roberts. But somebody don't forget had been to Wembley themselves not too long ago. And they had different ideas and they were soon on level terms. Cross coming over from the far side and at the far post to score the equalising goal was Stuart Phillips. So somebody looking to try and build a bit of a lead to take down to their home ground in just a week's time. 
Sutton lead with one of the best goals in the competition. Came from the number 11, Kevin Catley. Guysley strode forward looking for the equaliser and had to wait until the dying seconds of the game. Bob Colville, the substitute, came on and did what he was there for. His left foot, putting the ball into the net, make the score 2-2. So just a week later down to the Priory Stadium, home advantage for Sunbury. But it didn't count too well as Geisley took the lead, scoring his 10th goal of the competition, Ian Noteman. The home crowd quickly got behind the Sudbury team. It wasn't too long before another long range effort put them back on level terms. Dean Barker the scorer. But the man who'd been causing all sorts of problems for the Sudbury defence was on the mark again to put Geisley back into the lead. Notching his 11th goal of the competition, his second of the game, Geisley's second, goal scorer of course, Ian Noteman. And with the Twin Towers in sight again for a second consecutive year, Geisley weren't going to be beaten. The third goal quickly came, came over from the left-hand side. Mark Tennyson was there to score the first goal of the competition. His first, Geisley's third. And once again, Geisley were back at Wembley for the 1992 final to face Wimborne. traces the steps he made last year and even he never imagined such a quick return to this famous stadium. While Alex Price, the man at the helm for Wimborne Town, finally has his dream come true to the delight of Dorset. Yeah, what a match this promises to be. Geisley, of course, start today's game as FA Vars holders and are bidding to become the first side in six years to retain one of non-league football's most coveted trophies. Wimborne Town, though, have had a tremendous season, reaching the finals of the Dorset Senior Cup, the Wessex Combination Cup, and you know what magpies are like for collecting shiny objects? The FA Vars will look very nice back in the nest. The two sides then waving to their sets of the supporters. They go for the traditional line -up. Wimborne supporters away to my right. Splendent in their black and white. And the Geyser fans, of course, over to the left. Just slightly outnumbered, I feel. So, Wimborne actually lining up on the Geyserly side, and uh, Geyserly lining up on the Wimborne side. Quite strange. Alongside me, as usual, my co-commentator Ian Leach. Afternoon, Ian. Good afternoon, David. Fine afternoon for it, as they say. Beautiful, isn't it? Bit of a wind blowing straight down the pitch, but um, I don't think you'll feel that much down there. One or two announcements being made as we wait for the presentations. That's just tripping over as he came. But uh, the guest of honour this afternoon, a man who's played here very, very many times before in England shirt, is uh, Jack Charlton, of course. He's now at the helm of the Republic of Ireland. And uh, they do say that anybody can qualify to play for Ireland these days, Ian. Well, that's it, yeah. An Irish setter, an Irish wolfhound, anything like that, and you're in. Well, there we are. <laughs> so, Jack uh, being introduced at the moment to the Geisley team. A new captain, I believe. You've been with the Geisley side this morning, Ian. Yes, Martin Tetley been captain uh, since the beginning of the season. Nothing, with, nothing wrong with Colin Hogarth's captaincy, it's just that Hogarth had the glory last year and they decided to let somebody else in on the act. But very confident, very calm, cool, collected guys this side this morning. They've done it all before. I think a couple of the players, uh, Bob Colville, who isn't actually playing, I think he's on the subs bench, he seemed a little bit nervous, but um, other than that, they were fine, very relaxed. So there we are, at one change there, if you like. Martin Tatley, captain in the side, the guys of this afternoon. I've spent the morning with the Wimborne Town side, um, probably starting as underdogs, but um, 
They don't feel that they're underdogs in any way, shape or form. They're very confident. In fact, I've never met a man so confident as Alex Pike. Good grief, that man could be Prime Minister one day. Who knows? So Jack Charlton now makes his way along the line of Wimborne players. See Taffy Richardson. He made a comment about me claiming that he was balding. He has, in fact, got hair on the top of his head, albeit not a lot, but it is fair. He's earned the nickname Choco for some reason this morning. I've yet to get to the bottom of that one and probably never will. There we are. So a little bit of rain was experienced when we first arrived. So there's a fair breeze blowing from left to right. So it'll be a decision for the captains as to who actually plays with the wind or against the wind, whichever way you prefer it, in this first half. One decision, in fact, the first decision for the managers to make. And we reach from what I feel is one of the best bits of Wembley now, the national anthem. crowd making a lot of noise, not quite ready for the anthem as yet, as you've probably heard. I think the reason for the delay was Big Jack was asking the referee if he was Irish. Probably the case. This is Martin Bognum is the referee and I don't think he is actually Irish either. guys here then. Number one is Paul Maxted, number two Peter Atkinson, number three Colin Hogarth, number four Martin Tatley the captain, number five Dave Morgan, number six Vince Brocky, number seven Alan Roberts, number eight Mark Tennyson, number nine Ian Noteman who there was an injury doubt over but plays, number ten Richard Annan, number eleven is Billy Roberts. Through the Magpies side, the Wimborne Town team, of course, number one is Kevin Leonard, number two, Phil Langdown, number three, Robbie Beecham, number four, Mark Allen, number five, Andy Taplin, number six, Trevor Ames, number seven, the skipper, Steve Richardson, number eight, Nicky Bridal, number nine, Tommy Killick, number ten, Jamie Sturgis, and number eleven is Simon Lynn. As we've already mentioned him, your referee for this afternoon's name is... Uh, Martin Bowden, the Cornwall FA, his two linesmen, Messrs. Budden, and certainly Mr. Rennie from Sheffield. Well, Ian Leach, we talked about confidence. This is usually a critical time, the first few minutes of any cup final. How do you see it going? Well, I think if guys would start the same as they did last year, where they got two goals up very early on, they would be very happy. But um, I would imagine that they'll try and put Wimborne under pressure a bit. They've been here before, guys, they know what it's all about. Whereas Wimborne, you say they're confident, but uh, I still think even if you're confident, when you come out to scenes like this and a crowd noise like this, it's, it still takes your breath away a little bit. Well, it certainly does take your breath away. There are no less than, I think it's eight players in the Geisley side that played here at Wembley last year and uh, it certainly makes you wonder how big a bearing that will have on it. Yeah, I would imagine it uh, early on it will have a very big bearing. I think if they, uh, if they settle a lot quicker than Wimborne then that will be the telling factor. As the game goes on, obviously if there's no score, if Wimborne get a goal up, that will build their confidence up. But um, I think you've got to start with Geisley as favourites. So there we have it. Start with Geisley as favourites was the prediction there. Um, I'm a bit of a man for the underdog and uh, 
I honestly believe that Wimborne have got one heck of a chance. They wouldn't be here if they hadn't. There was a lot of nerves in the Wimborne camp. A lot of uh, strange looks as we walked up the tunnel, having left the coach. But all the talking's over now. It's down to the action. It's going to be Wimborne to kick off, kicking from left to right. Tommy Killock with the ball, number nine on his shirt. Tommy Sturgis alongside him. And this is it then, the referee checks with his linesman. Horns blazing from the guys they side of the ground. And the whistle goes and we get on the way to the 1992 FA Vols. Sturgis getting the first touch for Wimborne, tries to put the ball inside. Came off Dave Morgan. Going to be a corner, so a first minute corner. Simon Lynn goes over to take it. And I want to see if the big man up, Mark Allen. Number four for Wimborne, he goes towards him, he doesn't get a touch. It's cleared by Brocky, moved as far as Roberts. Let's touch onto this side. And now, for Tennyson, Tennyson, and now to his left, goes to use him. Taplin's challenge was good enough. Richard Annan hops to take the throw. Blocking the touch. All throw to Geisley. One or two options on for Colin Hogwarts. Will he go for a long throw? No, he doesn't. Plays the short one. Eventually with Annan. Faced by two Wimborne players. They played by playing down Simon Lynn. So a spot of sunshine, but certainly the pitch in excellent condition here. Yeah, a few bare patches down the middle, but considering the amount of play that it has on it, uh, when you consider there's a Rugby League Cup final coming up, there's an FA Cup final, I think England and Brazil are here as well. It uh, certainly takes some hammer. And several thousand Freddie Mercury fans as well. So, steady progress being made by both sides, and then this, uh, this near touchline. Looking down on this from our Coventry, Coventry point. Tennyson looking to, to control it. And uh, a particularly good ball, a few nerves from Mark Allen, nicknamed Stroller, would you believe? Sounds more like a thoroughbred racehorse over 14. Yes. I think you'll see um, Geisley using the width of the pitch a lot in these opening stages. They feel that with their footballing style, that's where they're going to make most inroads. And you'll see here again on the wing, it's Richard Allen. We're going in to a dangerous position. Richardson can't reach it, Morgan can, and the referee got in the way a little bit there. But still the pressure from Geisley, Richard and Anne's cross. Kevin Leonard needs to catch, opted for a punch. And a little bit of danger there, which Wimborne need to clear quickly. Richardson getting the ball out to kill it. Peter Atkinson happy to concede the throw, but uh, always difficult for goalkeepers, they need a good clean first touch. They do, yes, yeah. Be pleased with that, I think. He got the ball away, it was going on to, I think it was Tennyson's head. So uh, he'll be happy with that one, no doubt. On top of that, of course, the wind's blowing down that way, so any breeze that is taking the ball, it was taking it away from him. So we take a look at Paul Maxton, the man who uh, we looked at last year as well. Interestingly enough, when the two teams lined up, they, uh, for the presentation, guys, they lined up the opposite way round to uh, to last year. Just an observation. Could be an omen. This is Noakman, the man who scored so many goals in this competition. Noakman turns well, goes inside two defenders. Little support. Anan is there. Anan goes for the shot. Kevin Leonard, happy just to gather that one, but. Uh, the man who scored 11 goals in this competition, Ian Noakman, was causing problems already there. Yes, I spoke to Ian Noakman before the game. He's just happy to be playing this afternoon. He was the, the odd man out, so to speak, last year, the 14th man. But uh, he said he just wants to get out there, hopefully get in amongst the goals. That's he... true. Noakman in the squad, actually, last year. Um, the year previously, his brother Wayne played for Bridlington in the, the same cup final, the 1991. And his other brother, Kevin, would you believe, plays for Doncaster Rovers? Anyway, Wimborne 
pushing forward now. Kilt couldn't get to it. Martin Tetley did. So just over four minutes gone and still the scoreline at the moment. Geisley nil, a Wimborne nil. Backstead's kick against the wind wasn't a, a bad one. This is Atkinson. Inside. Tennyson did well. Finds Atkinson again. Atkinson needs to cross. Just so. The defending wasn't particularly good. Roberts whips the ball in and that one was nearly there. And a half chance, I feel, there. Yes, the pressing forward well, guys, Lee, but uh, Wimborne will be happy just to contain them, keep the ball out of the net in the early stages. That's the main aim. But a lovely ball down the line there to Peter Atkinson. Brilliant ball. Most of the Wimborne players were saying to me this morning, if they can hang on for 20 minutes and soak up a bit of pressure, then they will be happy. And that was probably the plan of Alex Pike. And they are so good at soaking up pressure. We've seen that in the semi-finals. So far, so good for Wimborne. Richardson and Allen getting in each other's way. This is Richardson again. Opens the play up a little bit. Nicely turned inside. Not particularly well. So then throw to Geisley. Roberts trying to turn, couldn't. Killick picks up the loose ball, little support. Richardson lost out to Roberts. Nice skills. And a little bit of a skirmish, I think. More frustration than anything from the part of the ball player. Yeah, it's nothing nasty, just uh, I think frustration on both sides. Frustration by the windborne player and frustration by the guys we play who was uh, wanted to make progress. Tennyson goes for the long shot with his left foot, but it actually came off the heel of Andy Taplin, according to the referee. And that'll be a corner, so the first corner for Geisley. And that's one corner each, likely enough from the same side as well now. And uh, it'll be Roberts that goes over the team. will not be wind assisted pushes it away Morgan tried to get there Richardson the acrobatics Killick Anam good skills Morgan Anam Tetley up for the one two he could still get it in actual fact Good piece of defending. And actually, uh, the ball clipped off the heel of the guys there, man. I think a free kick was given there. I think they uh, deemed Tetley's challenge a little bit late. Couldn't see it myself, but he's closer than I am. And the goalkeeper's long kick towards Killock. Morgan climbing all over him, but the referee said he wasn't. He's the one that matters. Lying down, puts forward Killock turned well bit of pushing and certainly Tommy Killett who hasn't played very much at all they're calling him Miracle Man because he's had this wonder treatment that's enabled him to play for the first time in absolutely ages apart from uh, a few appearances of substitute scored some goals in the earlier round and there we are again uh, it'll be Trevor Ames to take this kick is he lining up a shot it was indeed, and it wasn't so far away. Trevor Ames scored two in the semi-final, the goals that brought Wimborne to Wembley, and was bold enough to have a try there, and, and why not? Yes, he did it in the semi-final. A bit different here at Wembley, though, a lot, uh, lot further out, but it's the sort of thing that dreams are made of. So oh, the sun shines on the righteous. It will be the righteous. This is killer. I said, I don't if you bridle couldn't get to it. But the senior man in this side, he is actually the oldest player in the side. I'm sure he won't mind me saying that. 
inside to Tennyson. And Roberts and Atkinson, Atkinson overlapping is Vince Brocky, he goes alone. The chance was on, but it was a good tackle in actual fact. The chance is still there, it's a good cross. Keeper flapped at it a little bit, could have caught that one. Richard Annan. It's anywhere. Hogarth trying to get in. The ball eventually comes off Simon Lynn. He's in possession now. Another worrying moment for Wimborne. That's Morgan. Hogarth. Brocky didn't connect properly. Mark Allen did, but it was with the player. The referee says play on. There's a chance. The defence was caught a bit square there. They pushed up sufficiently and Moatman was caught offside. Ian, so far. Good start by guys, Lee, but again, you have to look at Wimborne. They're soaking up this pressure of the, as they have done in previous rounds. And um, it's difficult. I think you'd say that uh, guys are on top, but Wimborne are so good at this pressure game. That's the way the situation is then. 11 minutes into this 1992 FA's Vars final, but this is Jamie Sturgis and a nice touch. Tommy Killick, Killick into the box and the chance. And what a good tackle. It's a vital saving tackle from Peter Atkinson, but uh, he's proving a bit of a handful at the moment, Tommy Killett. Yes, great tackle there, going in on goal, but uh, no doubt that it, was, that it wasn't a penalty. Uh, the Wimborne fans claiming it, but uh, it was a superb tackle. Brilliant block, but they're going to have to watch this man kill it. Yes, he certainly seems to uh, have been the secret weapon that a lot of people were predicting he was. Unfortunate man who uh, lost his place is Brian Wilkins, the army sergeant. He's one of the substitutes this afternoon, along with Jason Lover. So, Geisley building again. Richard Annan, good, intelligent running from Roberts. Goes to the cross, wasn't the best one. Simon Lim, nice ball. Nicky Bridal, kill it to his left. Wasn't the world's best ball. And Bridal acknowledges that. I think that tackle is one thing, it'll test out whether he's got an injury or not. Well, it certainly appears to be moving pretty well. Uh, a real joker in actual fact, Tommy Killock. Uh, somebody had actually cut the toes off his socks, would you believe, in the hotel. And then he returned to find the sleeves missing on his shirt. So, um, a good time was had by all at the hotel. I would imagine so. Yeah, but I just, out, hope, so. I just hope his toes weren't in the socks at the time that they were cut off. The strange thing is he did wear those socks to travelling because they're the only ones he can cut. This is Roberts. Hops for the cross. Wasn't a bad one. And his brother is coming in on the far side. Allen. And Sprocky keeps it in. Good running and an excellent cross. Tennyson. Allen needs to clear. Does so. The danger still not gone. Billy Roberts in. I think he could have been climbing quite over Nicky Riddle there. There we go, quickly taking free kick. Killick. Richardson. There was so much speculation over Ian Oakman's injury. Um, what was the story at the hotel? Well, funnily enough, it wasn't mentioned. <laughs> I would imagine that uh, they're either keeping it quiet or it wasn't the problem that it first seemed. But um, he was, as I say, he was well confident, no worries at all. But uh, it's very inter very interesting opening. Wimborne coming more into it now. This is Killock. Right foot cross. A chance for Sturgis, who was going to go for that with his head, changed his mind, and the chance went. But once again, we're seeing how dangerous Wimborne can be on the break. Yes, yeah, another good break by Wimborne. So you get the feeling that if Geisley don't get a goal, the longer they go without scoring, the more confident Wimborne are going to get. The more they're going to come into it. So into the 14th minute, still goalless. Geisley, as we've said, bidding for a piece of history. To become only the third side to ever win the competition in successive years. In fact, they're the first team in history, in the history of the FA Boss, to appear in three successive semi-finals. So they've already made one piece of history. Anyway, throw to uh, Wimborne, Phil Langdown takes it. Richardson. Simon Lynn couldn't connect. Ball down the line. Tennyson. 
got the touch, Noakman chases and there's a chance on here, this is Noakman with a golden opportunity, surely he must score and he does the error was probably by the defence and the goalkeeper suspicion of whether the goalkeeper came too soon it was an important ricochet and probably a lucky one that gave Noakman the chance the goal in the 15th minute to the goal scorer Kevin Ian Noakman yes all about persistence, all about good striking. He followed the ball up. I do think, really, that the goalkeeper came too early. I thought the, uh, the pullback may well have got in there. There may well have been a chance of him knocking the ball back to the keeper, but the goalkeeper came, committed himself, touching the Bruce Grobelage, you could say. Got the touch on it, rebounded against Noteman, and really, got it. Not exactly a simple chance as uh, Wimborne mounts another attack there. Not a simple chance, he was still at a difficult angle, there was a player on the line, but he kept his cool and that's the goal he was talking to me about about an hour before the kickoff. So Geisley won, Wimborne nil the scoreline. The 12th goal in the competition for Ian Noteman. And it's still Geisley pressing. Tennyson goes for this important challenge from Allen. This is Richard Annan, goes for the 1-2, and Annan with the chance, good save! redeemed himself, the defence was split, it was a lovely one too, it was nearly 2-0, but a good save from Kevin Leonard, but the pressure still on. There'll be a corner then, Geisley going for the kill. It's ironic really how Kevin Leonard's probably been given some confidence by that good save now, but uh, they've already conceded a goal, but Sprocky will take the corner. Went for the near post. Pressure again. Morgan. Anan went for the skill again. Didn't come off. Nicky Bridal took it off his foot. Good skills from the midfielder. Lynn. Sturgis. Sturgis. Has Killick out to his right. Killick in space. It's three on board at the moment. Killick needs to cut inside. It's the world's best cross, but it's dangerous. And a chance it hit the post. Don't miss me. Well, it was the world's best cross, actually. Could have been a goal out of nothing. Where was Maxted? Yes, I thought Max did then. He, he was watching the ball. I think he thought it was going over. But uh, whether the wind held it up in the air, I don't think uh, for one minute it was a shot. It was certainly a cross. But uh, hit the inside of the post, but nobody following up. Jamie Sturgis looked at that one in disbelief. Would never have thought it would come back off the post. If he had, he'd probably gone for it. But the chance for guys in now. This is Roberts. Well, the goalkeeper came well there. And he needed to because the chance was there for Alan Roberts. Actually, the goalkeeper looking more confident now. Yes, after that break um, with the goal, he's uh, come back, made two very important saves. Not so much a save the last one, uh, but a good piece of challenging. Put the, did enough to put the player off. It's almost as if the um, the goal is conceded, taking the pressure of him a little bit. Seems a strange thing to say, but uh, nevertheless, Kevin Leonard, the man in question, works for British Telecom. Certainly wasn't late when it came to saving that one. Certainly telegraphed that one. Moving down this right hand side though, Kinson. For the 1 2, didn't come off, still has the ball. Earns himself a corner. Well, Ian Noteman, the goal scorer, has actually scored in every round but the second. And uh, what a record he has. Short corner, wasn't picked up very quickly. Atkinson gets the chance for the cross. It was a good one, Tennyson's header went across the goal. Wimble not getting to it very quickly at the moment. A lot of space, Vince Brocky. Oh, with a speculative shot, but uh, I'm a little worried that Wimborne aren't closing down some of these uh, raiding Kaisley attacks. Yes, that's the first sign we've seen there of uh, the defence not really doing its job. Um, Peter Atkinson should have been picked up from that corner. But uh, it's great to see Peter Atkinson going down that right side. Loves going forward. Told me before the match he much prefers to play at fullback and get in on them runs rather than playing on the wing. But uh, very exciting play going forward. Noteman puts the ball up. Loses out to Ames, but he doesn't. He turned inside well. So another corner. Well, the game plan for Geisley going exactly right at the moment. They lead by that one goal. 15 minute strike from Ian Noakman. The team in the driving seat at the moment. 
Sprocky. Recently signed from Gull Town. Takes the corner. But I'm sure he takes them better than that normally. So Steve Richardson, the Wimborne skipper, needs to uh, push his side on. The 25-year-old civil engineering inspector. Scored three goals in the competition so far as Richardson. That's the man who nearly got to the ball there. Kill it. Shadowed by Morgan. And boy, is that a big shadow. And Morgan again. What a good tackle. And then the ball went out. So, 31-year-old Dave Morgan doesn't appear to be any slower than the last time we saw him a year ago. No, still doing the same job. Battling for every ball. This is Richardson. Needs to turn. It was Morgan again. What a crunching tackle that was. Simon Lynn. Lynn. The ball inside to kill it. Wasn't the best one. It was far too hard for the striker's feet. But, um, one thing about Dave Morgan, I meant to ask you, Ian. You've seen him this morning. Um, did he have his teeth in? He did have his teeth in when I saw him, yes. I can't uh, account for now, but uh, he certainly did this morning. Not a pretty sight to be marking you on the... Saturday afternoon. I didn't say that. This is Tennyson. And I. Nopeman. Tackle was from Ames. A good tackle it was too. And a good ball towards Killett. Still just came in behind him. But it was Tetley that tied it up. as we lose a little bit of sunshine scoreline still 1-0 in favour of course of Geisley in the 1992 FA Vars final this season a total of some 475 clubs entered the FA Vars competition and we're down to the last two at the moment So, free kick to be taken by Trevor Ames. Towards Richardson, who got the header in. But really, at the moment, Wimborne just lacking that little bit going forward. Yes, it's the uh, majority of the players have been from guys. They'd have had a couple of chances, the one that hit the post, obviously, Wimborne. But, um, the, foot, the football being played really is being played by Geisley more than uh, more than Wimborne. They're not really giving Wimborne the chance to play any football. This is Noakman. And Shadow aims again. Towards Sturgis. Morgan there, won the challenge. A good one too. It's Noakman to Roberts. He gets the return, but he doesn't. Wimborne to be a little quicker. Bridle there. Ball from Roberts nearly came off. So again, Geisley just stand and look at the game and decide where they're going to play the ball. They're in control, they're the side leading. Yes, the crowd booing that pass back there, but uh, the initial ball out from Wimborne, it wasn't very inventive. It just into a space, into the middle, picked up. You can't blame Geisley really, playing it back and starting again. It's a shame the Wimborne supporters are so quiet at the moment. A goal would really lift them, and uh, while it was even, they were making such a lot of noise. They could do with getting behind their side. They need it at this point. Bocky in the centre of the field. Richardson caught him, but the referee sensibly let him play go on to Noakman. Noakman! It's the danger man again. Support from Roberts. But he goes for it himself. He's not going to get past Mark Allen. The big midfielder did well. So, throw to Geisley, a quick word there with uh, Richardson by the referee to say, look, I did see you kick the player there, but uh, don't do it again. Nicky Bridle. Well, I think Pen the Tennyson can feel uh, a little upset with that one. Not yes. a bad tackle. Thought he got the ball there. Thought he got the ball. Into 
the 25th minute then, Mark Allen inside to Richardson. Idle to his left, looking for Killock, didn't find him. But Killock found it himself. They need a little bit more effort to the Wimborne side at the moment. The guys the other side that uh, look as if they've played together for a few years. Which seems to be the final patch that's letting Wimborne down at the moment. So the throw on the far side. In front of uh, well, they're not dugouts, the benches where the managers sit. Tennyson couldn't bring it down. And now, spots another attack going. Hogarth to chase, keeps the ball in. The linesman said no. Hogarth, a little excited. Simon Lynn. Allen inside, didn't use him. This is Tommy Killock. Allen with a good through ball now. A chance for Jamie Sturgis. The ball didn't bounce kindly for him. And Tetley was the man tidying up. Noteman. And Anne. Tennyson. Allen's was the challenge, and certainly Mark Allen will come into this game even more now. Makes you wonder if uh, that would have been okay if they'd run onto that one. Yes, if they'd have got there. I think uh, Max, you'd have seen Max to come out of his goal a bit sharper, though. It was interesting talking to Gordon Rayner before the game. He was saying that the worst thing about Wembley, if there can be a worse thing, is that uh, when you're on the bench, you're so far away from the action that once you've given your pre the teams are out, that's it, you're finished. And the same at half-time. You only get half-time, really, to put it right. But I would imagine out of the two managers at the moment, it will be Mr Rayner that's slightly the happier. Well, believe me, knowing Alex Pike, I don't agree with that statement, Ian. I think we'll hear him. Brocky pushed the ball forward, an intelligent ball, only just offside as well, but Richard Anand ran into space very intelligently indeed. The man employed by Yorkshire Water ran away from his marker. So, free kick then to Wimborne. 28 minutes of this first half gone. Geisley won Wimborne nil. Ian Noakman the scorer after just 15. A touch back from Killock. Richardson's with the shot. And there's the ball in the net. It is. It's a goal. Wimborne equalise. Steve Richardson, the scorer. His fourth goal of the competition. A stinging left foot drive. From all of 20 yards. Was going towards the top corner. Max did got his hands to it. But it was too hard for him to hold. And the ball was in the net. I think, to be honest, I'd have to blame Matt, Paul Maxted for that. He got his hands to it, but he tried to push it over the bar. I don't think he realised how far he was off his goal line. And um, really, he pushed it over the line. I think he would be very disappointed from by that. Well, we said the crowd weren't making too much noise over on that right-hand side. It's as if we've written the script ourselves. Into voice they come, and into the game from Wimborne, and that's just the tonic they needed. Yes, it's been mostly Geisley. Wimborne had the break. And this man on the ball now, Steve Richardson, scored the goal, but no one has the chance. Oh, dear me. Well, you would have thought a man of the calibre of Ian Noteman would have made that 2 1. Yes, I would have thought that it had got in there, but uh, pulled it wide and uh, sliced the shot, really. Came probably a bit too soon after the goal, but uh, as I say, going back to the goal, I think if you look at the reaction of Paul Maxted, you'll see that uh, he was disappointed. He knows he should have had that one. In fairness to Maxted, he's had very little to do. When he was called upon, things didn't work out as the scoreline reflects. One apiece then. Allen pushes the ball forward into space. Killer Chase didn't get it. Allen again, what an inspiration he is. This is Tommy Killer. For once loses the attentions of Morgan. Killer gets the crossing towards Sturgis. Bridal was there. And again was, of course, Simon Lynn on the ball at the moment. This is Lynn. It's the crossing. Came off Morgan's heel. Killer. 
spell of pressure from Wimborne at the moment and guys are looking uncomfortable. It certainly sprung Wimborne into life. Yes, yes, they've come back into the game. But uh, this is the time that uh, Gordon Rayner was talking about really, when you need to calm your players down. It was all a little bit hectic in there, uh, in defence there for a moment ago for Geisley and they just need to calm it down, play the football. But credit to Wimborne, they're coming back. Richardson to kill it, kill it, puts the ball up, he's in space, he's got Sturgis in the middle, goes for Sturgis, this is Sturgis, the chance of The guys with defence. True statement, I'm afraid. <laughs> there you are, the scoreline reflects two goals in three minutes. The game turned around. And the scoreline now 2-1 to Wimbledon. Now this will test the character of this Geisley side. They're not used to being behind. Have not conceded many goals in this competition at all, just six. So they've conceded a third of that tally in just one game. Vince Brocky over the ball with Richard Annan. 14 to go to half time. Colin Hogarth. Looks as if he could be one of them taking the free kick. Three of them then. Well, there, Brocky takes it then. Tennyson there. Leonard came and punched. Bridle to bring it away down the left side, not a particularly good one. Brocky, there's nobody over here, and Richard Annan complaining a little bit. That's uh, not what we usually see from the Geisley side, uh, having words with themselves. Confidence will be high with Wimbledon at the moment. Nicky Bridle the inside and that one wasn't a particularly good one so Paul Maxted the goalkeeper who was on the winning side last year has conceded two goals Richardson Wimborne Wimborne the chance coming from their supporters Definitely in full voice now. Bridal gets his head to the ball. Well, have we got a cup tie or what? Yeah, certainly exciting stuff. I feel that uh, Geisley's heads have dropped at the moment. You look at Billy Roberts there in the middle, his head's just looking down and they need to pick themselves up, get a grip. Let's be realistic about this. We've not even ended the first half and uh, remembering that epic game last year. 4-all was the final score, quite amazing, it was to and fro in that game, this one doesn't look any different, Sturgis with the touch, Tommy Killett coming through an enormous amount of work, he worked hard, gets the ball out to his full back, this is Lang down, Allen, Allen again, is he having a good game or what Mark Allen? Covering a lot of space, covering a lot of ground in the middle. a little cloudy here at Wembley, still just as, uh, as windy as we can see the flags waving away but this is Geisler moving forward, Roberts came off his heel at the heel of um, Tennyson, Richardson, Bridal, still just finds Allen, who isn't knocked off the ball easily, return from Sergis, needs to play the ball inside to Allen, does so, Goes for the return, this is Allen, who's got a good shot on him, but he opted to go alone. It was probably the wrong decision, and Tetley brings it away for Geiser. Good ball out to this left-hand side, Noakman will have to chase. 
and lie down will shadow him. Gets the better of the exchange. Sturgis won it well. Tommy Killer, Killer. There's two defenders to go through. Nearly came off for him. Good defending numbers. Vince Rocky. Good challenge. With Rocky holding him off well. Kept his head. So not too well there. And the tackling made the important interception. And now. Oh God. Looking for Roberts. And finds him. What interception from Andy Taplin there. Put the ball to safety. Assistant manager at Safeways, Andy Taplin. We'll work. be alright for a bag full of frozen food, I dare say, for this. I think at the moment it seems to be guys that are frozen. They really do need to get a hold, get themselves sorted out. Oh god. And this one went for that. An important clearance from Andy Taplin again. Tommy Killer did well. This is Lynn. What a good ball, bit of space. If the pass had been better, could have split the defence. Atkinson, what a good game he's having. So is this man. Steve Richardson, Taffy, and a few tricks as well. Yes, Taffy sat on the ball in the semi-final, if you remember. I asked him if he'd be doing anything like that, and he said, well, Wembley's not really the place, is it? Why not? Why not? Wembley is the place for sticking the ball in the net, which is exactly what he did in the 27th minute for that equalising goal. So as we go towards half-time, Isley looking for an equaliser. Thirty-six minutes of this first half have passed. We've seen three goals, two in favour of Wimborne, one in favour of Geisley, and there's a Slips off. flag had caught him, but Sturgis sent Killock away. Tetley. Climb down, fortunate. And Simon Lynn. Lynn, kill it to his right. The three plays on. Killick, I think, wanted the free kick. The time he took on the ball, it was similar to one in actual fact. Sturgis has the challenge. Won the challenge. Ricky Bridal going for it. Well, Mickey Bridal isn't really a dirty player. I think that was uh, more over enthusiasm than anything. Yes, one thing that's in, that interested me there is if you look at where Paul Maxted is when uh, Wimborne are going, he's off his line. And I think that's, the, as I say, that's the trouble, particularly with the first goal. He was that far off his line, probably didn't realise. If you look at Wimborne go again, where he's standing, well to the front of his six yard box. The affirmation with the goal kick. Oakman lost out. Ball played forward. Morgan against Killick. Well, a slightly firmer back pass than Max did would have wanted. I'm sure, sure. Uh, Dave Morgan's no wish to score at Wembley in his own goal. No, I don't think so. I think uh, he couldn't afford to be a soft one, though, with Killick closing in. I think we're going to need the floodlights on soon. Richardson, Richardson to Killick. The lights and slag again. Dangerous game, though, by Geisley. Yes, very dangerous. I think it's a sign as well that um, they're feeling the pressure a bit. They, didn't, they certainly never started off the game playing the offside trap, but uh, they've obviously been rattled by those two goals, as any side would be. Well, those two goals that Wimborne have scored took their tally up to 20 in the competition. They have played some 11 games to reach today's final. That's probably why they've got such a high tally. No, I'm chasing this one. Kevin Leonard comes out and collects. Who, uh, when he clapped eyes on me at the hotel, said, It was you that said I looked like Bruce Gobelin, then, was it? <laughs> Certainly played like him for the first goal for Geisley. Anyway, he's on the, uh, the winning side at the moment. And Hogarth won the challenge well. 
fortunate to get away with that, but uh, it's rocky, tidies up, the guys are looking comfortable on that back four at the moment. Kinson needs to be positive here. Morgan. Hanan. Tetley. And speaking of dangerous games, Wimborne are doing likewise. Yeah, yeah, seems to be the way, doesn't it? But, uh, I think Wimborne now, since, certainly since Geisley scored, they've closed them down a lot more and they're getting in the tackles, they're not allowing them to play the football. Well, it's ironic that Alex Pike said for the first 20 minutes we'll close them down. He didn't say anything about giving them a goal, but um, they've certainly come into the game more, as the two goals would suggest. Five minutes to go then to half-time. Geisley one, Wimborne two. Mark Allen gets the header, Tommy Killick! Thought he was going to score there, Killer. But um, the referee giving a corner, so it must have been a defender that got his foot to that particular one. But uh, Allen again was left unmarked, and you can't leave a man of his height unmarked. So, let's see what the ball can do from this corner. As the ball floated in towards Allen again, Richardson got the touch, Killer at the back post. The best ball, more a clearance than anything, a break on for Geiser here. Vince Brocky, Oakman to his right, Roberts to his left, Oakman is the man. What a good tackle, but still a chance for Geisley. Wouldn't go back to the right position for Brocky. Trevor Ames needed and thought about the challenge and the tap back. Changed his mind well, Simon Lynn. Atmosphere now, some good skills from Lynn. Overlapping is Nicky Bridle, wants to get it surely. Away to the right hand side is Sturgis, but safely in the hands of Paul Max said. But the crowd lift Wimborne when they move forward. Yes, they're getting behind them, as I say, I think they're outnumbering uh, the Geisley crowd. Uh, not a great deal in it, but uh, there's certainly more from Wimborne here, but they've gone off the boil, Geisley. I they need enough. that half time talk. And a great deal in it, probably about 3,000. But um, here we are, it's Wimborne at the moment, looking the more comfortable of the two sides. But one silly mistake, could change all that. Oh. Richardson's ball, a good chance on this is Killick left on mark. Oh, score, surely! Yes, great finishing, great goal, but I can't believe this Geisley side, I really can't. They started off so well, goal up on 15 minutes, and they've just gone to pieces. But credit to Wimborne, they've done their job, they've held them off, and they've come back with three goals, three very well taken goals. Well, the irony of it is that I spoke to Tommy Kill. After a game of ball, I said, Tommy, I can actually see you running around Wembley with your arms aloft. He said, have you had a dream? I said, no, I just visualise it. Well, it's come true, maybe I was a lucky omen for him, but Geisley have a hill to climb now. The heavens open, we've got a bit of rain. It's probably threatened for most of the afternoon. But Martin Tetley really needs to push his side now. That was just what they didn't need before half-time. Terrible, yes. It's, uh, I think you've got to question the defence, really, the Geisley defence. Um, I mean, give credit to Wimborne for coming forward, but the defending really in this first half has been atrocious. Nothing short of atrocious. Jamie Sturgis, Sturgis, lost out. This is Morgan going across his own back line. And some tide is it up. So, a scoreboard away to our right. Reeds, Geisley 1, Wimborne 3. And we're two minutes away from half time, plus any injury time that we have. And now. Killick, scorer of the third goal. Well, you certainly can't question the finishing of the, uh, the Wimborne side when they've had the chances to put them away. Yeah, excellent. You say all, all three goals. I thought the first goal, I'd put that down to the keeper. The second goal, 
you know, in the third one, they're very good finishes. This is Trevor Ames. Needs to be positive. Wembley isn't the place to do that. Tetley. Hanan was too slow to react. Richardson put the ball forward. This is Sturgis to chase. And Atkinson will get the ball safely back to Maxton. So the 45 minutes come up on my watch. So we're into injury time. Just the one injury that I can recollect for this first half. Well, clash of fields there, but the referee ruled that uh, Simon Lynn had caught Richard Anand. So free kick to Geisley. We're going to have to take it quickly. There wasn't that much injury time, which they are doing. This is Rocky. Rocky players out wide, or Atkinson. Inside is Tennyson, who gets used, and he turns well. Now Atkinson. Roberts. Roberts. Got the cross in. Tennyson's flicked back. Rocky. Gets the crossover. David Leonard grabs at that one and did so very confidently indeed. Nicely on that right side but there's the referee's whistle that's the half time whistle indeed and some very satisfied Wimborne players walk off and some disappointed Geisley ones have it to do half time score then is Geisley 1 Wimborne 3 in Noteman after 15 minutes open the scoring then on 27 minutes Richardson equalised 30 minutes it was Sturgis to make it 2-1 and Tommy Killett and in the third goal just before half time. And that's the way it is at half time then. Geisley one, Wimborne Town three. Well, must be very disappointed at the first half. Yeah, we just caused his own problems and uh, you know we've got to get it sorted out now. And uh, you know I think second half we've got to, we've got, to, we've got a lot on but you know can't to get away from Wimborne, they've done well but we haven't finished yet. What do you think is going wrong? Well, I just think we've just got our own problems. You know, we give them a goal and uh, it's built their confidence up and, and we've just stopped playing. Are going to make any changes at half-time? No, no, not just yet. I think, you know, we'll just, uh, we'll just have, a, have a quieter word and we'll just uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks very much. Thank you. Brilliant comeback by your side there. Yeah, well, it's on a long, long way to go yet. It's still only 3-1. We've still got 45 minutes to go, but uh, Tommy Killett with his cruise ship has been absolutely tremendous. He's been outstanding. If we can carry on exploiting the plays at the back, I'm sure we'll go on and win it. Thanks. So as the players take to the field for this second half, it's guys who have got it all to do. If you're a supporter, for either side, you've seen four very good goals and a lot of excitement. If you're a Wimborne fan, or a Maggie's fan as they shout, you'll be particularly pleased. If you're a Geisley fan, well, you've had a good slice of success and they're still in with a good slice of even more. 3-1 down. Geisley, but never write them off. So how is this second half going to go? The big question is, can Geisley come back? Well, we saw them uh, come back from more or less the dead last year. I think they're capable of it, but I think a lot will depend on the first 10, 15 minutes. If they can get a goal in that time, then I think we could see a very different game. But I'm still amazed at the way they folded in the first half. After being on top in the first 20 minutes, getting the goal ahead, I would have expected them to go on. But uh, as I say, Wimborne came back into it, got the breaks, got the goals, finished well. And um, obviously Wimborne will be just happy to sit on the lead, play on, keep it going the same way. I'd be interested to see what Gordon Rayner had to say at half-time. I wouldn't imagine that we could broadcast it though. Well, he could safely say he's not best pleased. Anyway, we get ourselves underway. Let's see if that can be reversed. And we can get a quick goal, which is what they obviously need. Roberts to hold off. The ball down towards Tennyson. Wasn't as great as it first appeared. I could say it is very densely populated, the, uh, the terracing away to our right, with Wimborne fans. There are certainly far more Wimborne fans than Geyser. The team extends behind the uh, halfway behind that goal. So, Kevin Leonard kicks against the wind. And that could be an important factor in this second half. This is Killick. 
Atkinson shadowing in, Dave Morgan starts another attack going, but it came off Sturgis. Mark Allen. Oh, he says play on. Down to the referee, I also think he's had a very good game as well. Side. That's an angry chase. Nicky Bridal. And the tap. Dickinson. Bridal's touch. And Dave Morgan showing his experience there. He's on after the ball for a moment. Forty-five minutes are a long time. You're winning 3-1 or losing 3-1. It's a good length on his kick as you would expect with being wind assisted. That's the touch. Simon Lynn. New golf shadowing him. Pass inside Sturgis to Lynn. Lynn. Lynn ball pushing forward again. Rocky. Did some good, useful work there. And brought down in the process. Quick exchange of words, which I don't think was really necessary. It was a fairly innocuous sort of challenge. Yeah, but he's Scottish. I don't think you'd understand him anyway. So. Well, the referee certainly be able to uh, understand what's said because uh, he's having strong words. It wasn't a booking though, I don't think, was no, it? No, no. He's probably saying, I didn't understand what you said, but I'm booking you for looking at him in an unfriendly manner. Good enough for me. Hogarth with the free kick. Tennyson, challenge was from Ames. This is Simon Lynn. Killick lurking. You can't take your eye off Tommy Killick for a minute. He seems to be uh, popping up in all sorts of positions. Underneath that, no golf. Tennyson in space, given the opportunity, tried to get the ball inside for Noteman. Richardson did well. Kept his head, ball through to kill it. But um, there's obviously a late challenge on Taffy, or Choco as they're calling him. Knowing uh, Steve Richardson, I can't see him being down for too long. If he thought things were going to stay exactly as they were, I don't think he'd miss looking up those steps. No, I don't think so. Free kick into the penalty area. Lucky Bridal couldn't get to it. You can't do that with Ian Oakman. No, very pacey striker. But again, when the ball came out, it just didn't run for guys. And you wonder if it's uh, beginning to be a sign. It certainly ran for them in the first half with the goal, but. Uh... Nicky Bridal. Member of the Roberts brothers. Alan. Make too much progress forward. Kinson. Heisler just happy to play the ball across the back line. Billy Roberts didn't get too far because uh, that man, Mark Allen, was there once again. He looks to be a um, man who's having the, the best of the play for this Wimborne side. And, uh, yeah. Free letting it go. This is poisoning mouth, didn't happen. The two skirmishes creeping in, getting a bit untidy at the moment. Richard Anan goes to the one two with Roberts. This is Anan, goes past his marker, needs to get the ball in towards the back post. And Tennyson was actually too far in front of the ball and it went over him. So 
nicely built again. Rocky too slow. It's Jamie Sturgis. It's three on two. Now three on three as Tommy Killett comes towards the left hand side. And Martin Tatley was there. Once again, we're seeing that um, when guys they go forward, they go forward in numbers, that it's Wimbledon that is so dangerous on the break. Yes, I think that's going to be the pattern of the game now for uh, the rest of the, what, 38, 37 minutes that are left. This is Nightman! Scores! Out of nothing! Ian Nightman, the second goal of the game. And guys with second, now we've got a match of it. Well, that came out of nothing. Yes. I don't, I don't know who put the ball through, but again we find Nightman on the end of it. Keeping his core, but he did very well there. We had one earlier on where um, we put it wide, screwed it wide, but uh, kept his cool. Great stuff. Certainly got a game on our hands now. Guys, we're back in it, but you can't write off this Wimbledon side. They're going to come again. So there we are, Ian Nightman. After seven minutes of this second half, we said we needed one in the first ten and that makes it all the more interesting absolutely yes i said a goal in the first 10 minutes of the second half and uh, we could see you know a real cracker of a game we've got that goal and hopefully guys we can come back into it now but there again from Wimbledon's point of, Wimbledon's point of view they'll uh, they'll be looking to increase that lead and as you said it before they're very dangerous on the break well three two is the score line then five goal thriller and simon went out on that right hand side moving forward at the moment for Wimbledon. Mark Allen to his left, but shadowed by Colin Hogarth. It's the cross in, Sturgis. It's in black direction, black power. What an open football match we have then. Five goals we've had. <laughs> and that all important early goal has certainly lifted the Geisley fans, as you can hear them away to my left. They know the side are back in it. That man, Noteman, scores again. What a hat-trick now. Very much so, and it's been the second time in the competition this year that he's scored a hat-trick. He's uh, scored two on uh, quite a number of occasions throughout the uh, the rounds. I think it's probably three or four times, I'm not too sure, without actually checking. But uh, he scored twice again today, that we are certain of. He takes his tummy in the competition to 13. They kick to Wimborne. They've just tried to get underneath it. And we get back to Maxted. Well, you wouldn't put money on anything at the moment. No, not at the moment. I'll say that, that second goal for Garvey, that's the all important one, though. And he's open again, causing the problems. That means they're in touching distance again. And now, to Hogarth. Hogarth finds Roberts. Roberts needs to turn, did so. That's the free kick. Pressure then from Geisley. Quite honestly, you always expect goals when Geisley play, and uh, certainly not disappointing. Roberts, it's the cross in towards Tennyson. Sturgis, kill it. Tommy, kill it. Kill it flowing away, but he didn't do so well that time. Michael Shetley. Tennyson, Tennyson, tries to turn car, has Brocky in support, tried to use him, couldn't get it to him, the elbow was on Nick Bridle, his opposite number, the referee gives the free kick, really by the lines, and they've just calmed it down a little bit. Right, it's very much as we're going to see a substitution, it's ten minutes into the second half, number two held up, and it'll be Phil Langdown that goes off, Brian Wilkins comes on. Brian Wilkins, the Army Sergeant, who's um, got a lot of his colleagues here today. I wished him all the best. I said, if you come on, Brian, he said, well, you never know. And unless there's an injury, you never know. But he's on. Wilkins is a striker. It's a 
certainly played up front on, on a number of occasions. Wimble looking for that now. This is Wilkins with his first touch. A good one, it's two as well. Killer goes through, chance. Had to go for it. Baxter was quick enough. What a good touch for a substitute that would have been. Very good, yes. Uh, I thought Maxton seemed a little bit indecisive there, but he got out well, gathered the ball, and feeds him out once more. This is Tennyson. Turns both his markers, lost them, held them off. Roberts goes inside, went for the ball. Mickey Bridle strong in the tackle, and so is Richardson, but it's still Geisley pushing. Safely back to Evan Leonard. He's had a reasonably busy afternoon. 27 year old goalkeeper signed from Swanage last season so there we are then we're going to take the defender off and it's as if Wilkins is just going to be playing down on this left hand side which plays at the moment outside of midfield in that position, position. all not full towards Killer this is Killer, can he control it, he can! Surely he scores! Amazing! Tommy Killer scores for Wimbledon! Literally a goal out of nothing! How did he get it in on that angle? Very good, similar position to Ian Lopen in the first half, but he managed to steer it in. But I think the Geisley players were more worried about the challenge on Paul Maxted. They both jumped up for the ball together, and Maxted lying flat out in the area. And, and you saw uh, number six, Vince Brocky, following the referee, asking him why he hadn't given the free kick. But again, brilliant finishing, brilliant finishing. But what's your Tommy view Killen? on that? I mean, was there an infringement there on the goalkeeper or what? I think they both went for the I think they both went for the ball together. Um, it's difficult really to say, but uh, obviously Max did caught one. But the way goalkeepers are protected these days, it's. Uh, it wouldn't have surprised me if the referee had given it, but um, no, I don't think it. I don't think it was a foul. I think he got to the ball fairly. Um, probably a little bit of hesitancy on Maxted's part, but he did excellent. Took the ball wide, and even with two players on the line, two players chasing back, managed to steer it in. Classic finishing then from Tommy Killick, his second goal of the game. Wimborne's fourth. The 22-year-old training solicitor, who looks more like a rock star than a solicitor, with his long black hair over the back of his black and white shirt sticks the ball in the net and gives us a scoreline of Geisley 2 Wimborne Town 4 so Paul Maxted gets to his feet which is a good sign to see nobody wants to see a player injured I think probably more winded than anything yes as I say they both collided into each other but I think uh, Killick got up a lot obviously got up a lot sooner than Maxted did but um Worry as well for Gordon Rayner on the far side of the pitch. He's looking uh, very concerned. Well, it's an unusual position that Geisley find themselves in. They've now conceded four goals this afternoon. They've conceded just six in the whole competition before today. So there we are. It just goes to prove what a funny old game football is. Well, talking to uh, Gordon before the game, he was saying that... Uh, his worry, and some of the players' worry as well, was that they peaked too soon, particularly uh, Mark Tennyson. He said that last year he hadn't scored for six games coming into the final. Uh, this year he's been on a run. And in the league they've taken something out, something like 28 out of the last 30 points and it's lifted them from midway to third in the table. And that was their worry that they had peaked too soon and it, it certainly looks that way. So we have a cup tie that's produced six goals and still have a good chunk of this second half to go. Nicely two, Wimborne Town four. Tommy Killick scoring a goal. Mark Allen is given a word. Stroller. Builder by trade, and he certainly helped piece together this midfield for Wimborne this afternoon. Solid as a wall. Killick, this is Killick. He just scored the goals. Scored two balls on a hat trick now, Wilkins the line. I don't think that'll cause Martin Tetley too many problems. Martin Tetley, a fireman, certainly got to try and lift his side and help them climb the ladder. And 
tennis, one needs to begun on the floor, it is. Nicky Bridal, very deep at the moment. Wilkins, thought about that. Richardson, opens it up, Simon Lynn, very pacey little player, couldn't get on the end of that one because Hogarth did incredibly well. Tennyson, Geisley pushed forward again, they're not finished yet. This is Tennyson, surrounded by striped shirts, so many on that occasion and Mark Allen brings it away. Simon Lynn, Sturgis, Tetley was equal to it on that occasion, but uh, every time Tommy Killick gets the ball, the crowd respond. Yeah, with two players on a hat trick now, Killick and Noten, of course, but uh, at the moment you'd have to say that Killick looks favourite. Those heads have dropped from guys there again. This is Noten, the other man on a hat trick, Roberts turns inside Tennyson's intelligent ball to Anan. To Anan, uses Roberts or Willie, goes for the cross. And perhaps it would have been better to use Billy Roberts, who was just to his right. Goes begging, and uh, very strange to see some of the guys there lads sort of having a go at each other. Yes, there seems to be a lot of um, arguing amongst themselves down there. There's, there's certain players today, I think, who would be disappointed with a game. I think Richard Annan's one of them. Uh, we saw him come on as a sub last year and really turn the game, but um, it's not gone that way this year, and he's been dis one of the disappointments for me. Tennyson won the challenge well. This is Noakman. Again shadowed by two inborn players, one of which begins to the throw. Wilkins. So still very cloudy. But, uh, certainly the rain has stopped, which will please the players. No sunshine at the moment though. The guys are pushing forward again inside. So Nope, and tried to get the flick. Still not away from the danger area, this is Roberts. And Roberts gets, no, he doesn't get a corner. The referee said no, goal kick. Tried to get the cross in and when he tried to get the cross in, the ball rebounded, I think it hit him on the shoulder and went out. It's the way it goes when you're behind and chasing. Throw ball out Alan Roberts in, nice to get anything out of that. 24 year old company buyer is Alan Roberts, and the brother of Billy. He scored one goal in this competition this season. Richardson with a touch. And again, Richardson. Works so hard as Taffy in midfield this afternoon. I know. It's Wimborne that are getting to the ball quicker at the moment. Closing Geisley down. Not giving them a yarn. The ball from uh, Stroller who seems to be in the wars again. And now then. Is this Roberts? going to go into the book. Well, he seems to think so. He's been getting a little bit niggly. It looks as though the name of Billy Roberts will be going into the book. Played at Wembley, of course, last year. Was an English schoolboy boxing international, so let's hope the referee doesn't speak too much out of turn. You know what I mean. <laughs> so, free kick then to Wimbledon. 20 minutes gone of the second half. Geisler 2, Wimborne 4. Maxted needs to come for that one. Holds it well. Still doesn't look comfortable, Maxted. No, he seems to be struggling. You see him getting to his feet there. He's uh, very slow in getting up. I think he'd have taken a count of about five there. Moten's flick towards Tennyson. They've got to push up on this back line more as well, the uh, guys and the players now. I'd be inclined to start pushing Atkinson up more. Take the risk, you're 4-2 down, 20 minutes to go, you've got really nothing to lose. What about substitutes at this point? Uh, would, we, uh, would you expect Gordon Rainer to be thinking in terms of a substitute? I mean, we know that uh, Bob Colville came on in the first leg of the semi-final against Sudbury and grabbed that vital equaliser in the dying seconds. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bob Colville come on. Um, who he takes off? Who he takes off is uh, anybody's guess. As I say, I think there'll be a lot of players, lot, particularly a lot of guys, players, will be disappointed with their performances today. Wimborne, I should think, will be over the moon. Well, that's the first cliche that you've used, Ian. <laughs> but, uh, there we are. I'm allowed one. 
So, Kevin Leonard will clear his lines as the game settles down. Pushing on, Simon Lynn. Lynn makes the room, still has it. Kill it behind him. He went for the flick with the back heel. If it had come off, it would have been brilliant, but it didn't. Dave Morgan powers forward again. This is Simon Lynn. Vince Brocky tidying up. If there's uh, one player that's uh, worked very, very hard this afternoon, it's the six Vince Brocky. Yes, played very well, but uh, done a lot of work. But as I say, they haven't really, they haven't really penetrated as you would have expected them to. Atkinson trying to do just that at the moment. Goes across the body of Mark Allen. Still has it. The full back Anan behind him picks him up. This is Anan. Goes for it alone, could be teeing up for a shot. I think incredibly good tackle from Allen again, but the chance is still there. Atkinson to whip it in. Does so. Just slightly over the fence of his uh, oncoming forwards. Wisely still pushing forward. But the further you go into this game, the further you actually wonder whether or not they can clinch this extra goal. Now that is a surprise. And the captain goes off then. Tedley off. So it's uh, Wilson on. Yes. I would I would think that that's an injury to uh, Martin Tetley. I can't see them I can't see them taking uh, I can't see them taking Martin Tetley off bringing Phil Wilson on and yeah, without it being an injury. Now and this is Roberts with a chance, trying to get the shot in. It came off Wilkins, it's still not gone. Roberts again, the chance there. Oh, dear me! Well, that could have crept in. Mark Tennyson was the one to have the header. But um, Leonard was down quickly. It just proves how easily they could concede a goal. But, uh, Leonard was in a good position there. But, uh, Mark Tennyson, 27-year-old, Blank Clark. He got himself on the score sheet again, as he did last year. Brocky to Noteman. Tennyson. Allen spoiled his shot. Roberts. Roberts trying to get the cross in. Came off the defender. And that'll be a corner. So, Geisley pushing forward again. They made their substitution and taking off the captain, Martin Tetley. Oh, Wilson on the edge of the 18 yard box at the moment. Rocky floats the corner in towards the back post. Noteman and Tetley with the men powering in. Leonard got the ball away. Dangerous game to play. Sturgis underneath it. Rocky looks for Noteman. Doesn't find him. Looks like uh, Richard Annan's gone back to left back now. And Hogarth, Hogarth's gone in the middle. Although he seems to be up at the moment. He was uh, on the halfway line there. Kinson the touch. Noteman let it go. This is Wilson. Roberts to float it in. Towards Noteman. Noteman still the chance. Turner got the shot. It's still there for Roberts. Noteman again. Over the top, but Geisley were just not allowed any time on the ball whatsoever. And when Noteman gets near it, I don't think you can allow it anyway. No, I don't think uh, you'll see Wimborne giving them any time or space now. They know that uh, they're within well under 20 minutes to go. They're in there. They'll look at that scoreboard, see that two-goal difference. They won't want to give anything away. Kevin Lennon knocks the ball down. Could it be Wimborne's name? In the FA Vars for 1992. The FA Vars was actually launched in 1975 after the old FA Amateur Cup was disbanded. Huddleston Town were the first winners. Since then, 13 more clubs have triumphed. Only Villaraki and Hal Zoen have won the trophy more than once. Geisley, if they win today, would be the third. <laughs> so the pressure at the moment on Wimborne. This is Phil Wilson. Looks for Brocky, finds him. Space out on this right hand side is Atkinson, but no one plays the one two with Brocky. 
and he didn't catch it right though, did he? No, I think they're, uh, they're clutching at a lot of straws now. You see them trying these long distance efforts and um, they know it's slipping away. They've got to pull something out of the bag within the next few minutes, I think, to stand a chance. But there again, Wimborne scored two in three minutes. It's possible. Oh, 27 minutes have gone of the second half. And it's Wimborne pushing forward. Simon Lynn. Lynn kill it to his right. On his left is Wilkins. Tried to go it alone. The ball nearly went out towards Killick. Yeah. Now then, a bit of space here for Jamie Sturgis. Sturgis, any options on? Goes to the shot, I think that was. Either a shot come cross, a bit of both, I think. I think he was going to have a shot to start with and then noticed that uh, Killick was up there and tried to find him, but... Uh, Changed his mind too late. So I would have expected more noise from the uh, the Wimborne supporters. So Paul Maxted appears to be moving a little easier. And as the sun sunshine comes out here at Wembley, Simon Lynn on the ball. Dave Morgan. Get his forwards doing, does so. This is Roberts with a chance, what a good save from Kevin Leonard. And bravely went in there at the feet of the opposite uh, Roberts brother. Really, young Alan Roberts had to go for that one. The ball was loose. Oh yes, it definitely. I mean, at this stage, you've got to go for everything. But Kevin Leonard, apart from that initial slip up for the first goal, where I thought he was slow coming out, has had an excellent game. Challenging very strong for man of the match. Made very important saves. The one from uh, Tennyson in particular on the line, very good save. And a goal at that time could have made a lot of difference. It certainly proves he's nothing like Bruce Grumble on. This is Richard Annan coming down the left now, ball inside to Roberts. Roberts, three defenders on him, inside for Tennyson, who could hit this left foot, it does so, across the face of the goal. Goodness me, Ian Noteman was there. And also Alan Roberts, I know he needed a touch. And they'd have been backing it once again. Well, nothing safe until the final whistle. And as one famous man once said, who lost here a few weeks ago, it only takes a second to score a goal. Thing is, in Geisley's case, it's taken about 25 minutes to create it. Thing is, I'm thinking Alex Pike is uh, probably more flamboyant than Brian Clough, actually. Killick plays the ball out to Simon Lynn. Lynn the ball in towards Sturgis, didn't go. Only no goal. Playing in the centre of that defence at the moment, brings it away. Kinson on the right, now playing a little further forward on the right flank of midfield. Here he is again. Roberts trying to get the touch, Tennyson did. This is Atkinson, trod on the ball at the vital moment. Brian Wilkins got it away. Nice one too. Dave Morgan. Max did indicates that he wants the ball playing it away. Turns and finds Brockley. Down towards Noteman. It was Ames doing the covering. What a good game Trevor Ames has had. Roberts. Richardson was the victor. Needs to get rid of it. It was well. Wilkins. Nicky Bryan. Killick on a hat-trick and with Hogarth and every time he gets it the crowd cheer and roar not bad for an injured man <laughs> he's not doing too badly at all is he all his teammates have to have some of this miracle cure I think I was going to say all his teammates are calling him a miracle man wherever he went send me Dave Morgan didn't lose the ball there on one of his sorties Some good football from Wimborne now. Sturgis, Richardson, lovely ball out to Simon Lynn. Lynn with the chance. Will he go it alone? Has the opportunity. Try to play it inside. Ooh, an error from Brian Hogarth. Lynn's still there. Sturgis turns. Good save from Maxted. But what was Colin Hogarth thinking of there? 
Yes, terrible, uh, terrible piece of defending really, but uh, tried to find his goalkeeper, couldn't find him, and then slipped up in making the clearance. Yes, it was amazing, Simon Lynn almost nonchalantly knocking that ball in, caused all sorts of problems. This is Roberts, Tennyson, just across towards Noakman, good piece of defending from Nicky Rydell, Killick again. Thinks about it, plays the pass towards Simon Lynn, good header from Anan. Lynn made it awkward for Morgan. Nice ball forward from Allen, chance up for Sturgis, he scores! on the cup, I can't see Geisley coming back now, the two goal deficit probably, but not three, but they've only got themselves to blame, again it's terrible defending, maybe it's the space of Wembley that creates the creates these large spaces in, in the defence, but uh, I would imagine Gordon, Gordon Rayner will be uh, sick the way his defence has performed, but again a brilliant finish. Roberts pushing forward, chance for Noteman, didn't make the most of it, Richardson clears, Speaking of space, there's not a lot left on my note paper now. Seven goals we've got written on it. Five in favour of Wimborne and two in favour of Geisley. I've actually scored first for the chance. This is Noteman! It's the crossbar! He should have scored, he knows he should have scored. It was desperately unlucky. Well, goals are in abundance and we nearly got a third for Geisley there. But Ian Noteman could have been on a hat-trick. Could have had a hat-trick rather. But he didn't. This is Roberts. Roberts. Well won by Simon Lynn and Richardson between them. Jamie Sturgis. Well, I thought Richardson was going to sit on the ball then, like he did in the semi. Tommy Killett picks the ball up now for Wimborne. Holmes it intelligently, has no support. Find Simon Lynn, but he was flattened there, and the referee lets it go. Richardson takes no prisoners and goes in there, but it's caught by Atkinson, but the referee has actually controlled this game very well and let it go where he can. Yes, he's had a good game, the referee. And we're seeing a substitution, Ian Noteman, the man who scored two goals now going off, and Bob Colville coming on. Again, I must, think, I must say it must be an injury, I can't believe that you've taken your uh, man who scored two goals off striker and um, replace him with it. I think Colville's going to be a midfield player but we shall see. Well Colville came on and scored that vital goal as we said in the semi-final. A little bit of difference but um, makes you wonder whether Noteman was carrying an injury. But uh, certainly he's looked the sharpest of all the guys they forwards. And nearly scored again which just proves it anyway. The ball flighted in from Morgan. Didn't reach any of his forwards. Speculative effort was from Rocky. Really, as they say, it could all be over by the shouting. It's a major hill to climb, 5 2 down. This isn't so what Geisley are used to at all. 35 minutes were played of the second half. And again, it's Winborne to come out and score the goals and have taken the chances. interesting if Anand hadn't have made that interception there would have been a break on there is now this is Killick he's had a fabulous game still has the ball it's coming again towards Jamie Sturgis does of course match the new problems well Wimborne have needed replay since the fourth round right through to today's final if they've been involved in um, three or is it four locks of extra time periods to get here I don't think they're going to need that this afternoon no I don't think you're going to see that today I think they're home and dry now Sturgis though with a break little support four Geisley players there I don't think he's going to get round Hogarth in fact he doesn't Ian he was saying yes uh, I don't think uh, we'll need replays or extra time now I think you can safely say that uh, the cup is going back to Wimborne but they've d disappointed me Geisley because they're capable of a lot better than this but they just haven't performed today. 
Roberts gets the ball down to Tennyson. Tennyson goes for it. That will be a one-one throw. Decision by the referee. Wimborne are finishing the stronger and they're playing the football and they look very much like a side that are leading 5-2. Yes, credit to them, as I say, they've, uh, they've done the job. They went a goal behind early on, but they fought back and they've got it. The interesting thing is, quite a lot of their games have uh, been won by the odd goal. In fact, when you consider that going back to uh, only one of the early rounds, they only beat Horsham with the last second goal from Jamie Sturgis and that was in the 95th minute. I think if I remember right, Horsham missed a penalty after eight minutes. So it just goes to show what could happen, but what could happen here? Bob Colville gets the cross in. This is Atkinson. Came off the defender, but it's not gone. Brocky. Well, corner. Kevin Leonard just touching that. I don't think he really needed to, really, but uh, I don't think he really touched it. <laughs> well, he's not arguing about it. The 38th minute then, the second half. Eight minutes away from Wimborne putting the name and FA Vars. That's a dangerous looking cross. I think the ball had actually gone out there. The referee agrees with me. So there's uh, a lot of dejected looking faces on the Geisley side at the moment. And a lot of confident looking ones. Fight's going to say, I told you so. And Alex feels so right. Richardson puts the ball up towards Jamie Sturgis, has time, decides to, to run the defender. It was uh, Prince Brocky that was the, was the offender. He pulls him to his feet and says, Oh, come on. I don't really think there's any need for the referee to have a word there. I think he's booking him, actually. He really? It's probably a uh, culmination of things that have been going on out there. I think uh, Vince Brocky has been involved in one or two little skirmishes with Wimborne players, so... Well, I think a booking is the least of his worries at the moment. <laughs> Lynn gets the cross in. Lee Killick was lurking at that far post. He's on a hat-trick and how he deserves it. So, Paul Maxted, not often beaten by five goals on the floor. Actually, it sounds awful when you, you consider that uh, Maxted's conceded nine goals now in two Wembley appearances. This is Roberts, moves forward. Colville, Roberts. Two guys with players jumping for the same ball. And neither of them got it. So whistles from all around the ground, but we've still got some five minutes to play. Plus a little bit of injury time, which we have got. Two tired legs, I would have thought, out there now. I would think the tired legs are on the Geisley side because they know that it's over, but uh, Wimborne probably be running all day. In attendance at 10,772. Jeez. Flashed up away to our left on the scoreboard. We've not trained the camera on that one, but there we are. So, uh, good attendance. Colville, the touch off, nice interchange, but it never came to anything. And if anything, probably the key to this match has been the way that Wimborne have defended. They've defended so well. They have, yeah. They, as I say early on, they soaked, they soaked it up. They only gave the one goal away and hit straight back. I think that was vital, the fact that they did hit straight back after they went a goal down. Roberts cross. 
Colville jumping with Alan Roberts so we get a substitution Jamie Sturgis goes off Michaels has scored the fifth goal Jason Lavelle comes on Nice touch from Alex Pike, giving um, his other substitute a touch of the action and earning his medal. That's it, yeah, it's a bit of, bit of a game on the old turf of Wembley. Jason's uh, a bit of a lad in actual fact, he was uh, a bit awkward to say the least to try and interview on the coach. <laughs> uh, he blamed the, uh, the interviewer, but uh, I was having none of it. Anyway, a chance to make his mark in the three, three minutes that remain. Will he get his first touch? It is. With the shins of an Ann. Geisley, credit to them, are coming forward, playing their football as we know they can. Atkinson. Wilson went down. And a bit of a skirmish between Wilkins and Atkinson. Kevin Leonard getting very excited. Turned, he's not going to concede any more goals. Brocky will take the free kick. It's a good free kick towards the back post. Colville was up there. It's away only as far as Morgan. Morgan to turn this one back in. He has the power. He has the strength. He needs to hit it right-footed. It's come a long way. It uh, didn't come to anything at the end. Even Tommy Killick was back there helping his defence out. Richard Annan. So all the players in the Wimborne half, apart from Paul Maxted, who is actually out his area as well. This is Atkinson, Atkinson with the chance, falls to Alan Roberts. And it's a corner, so. Just two minutes of normal time left, and Geisley giving it one final push. Remember last year though, last goal, Equalising fourth goal, third goal, should I say, was scored. In dying seconds. Can't see that happening though today. So Jason Little getting his first top. Wasn't a bad one either. Goes for the return. That's the ball. Big strong boy. Not strong enough on that occasion. So if you had to pick a man of the match, um, who would you go for? Well, although he's let two goals in, I'd go for the goalkeeper because I think he's made good saves at important times. He's always been positive in what he's done. He's always gone out when he's been punching. He's gone out and he's punched well. He's made one mistake, which he paid for with a goal. Simon Lynn, though, with a chance for Wimborne, who's still on finish. Lynn went for the right-hand channel, didn't get too far. I think on the Wimborne side it's been very much a team effort but I think um, Allen as well, Mark Allen has had a good game but uh, I think the goalkeeper's made the saves at the important times. So this is Lovell, Jason Lovell, that's time, we're on 45 minutes now into stoppage time, Richardson, well, I would echo Ian's views, I think Kevin Leonard has played very well but I also think Mark Allen has been a truly tremendous Influence throughout this game, and for me, he would get my vote. Here's the man again, plays the ball forward towards Tommy Killick, he didn't get it. Play on, says the referee. Half a minute into injury time. The ribbons are being tied on the FA Vars for 1992. It's going to be Winborn Town go into the record books. What a day out it's been for the Dorset side. Referee checks his watch. Alex Pike is a long way away from me, but I'm sure I can see him smiling. The Wimborne fans start to cheer their side. We love you, Wimborne. It's Geisley that are pressing at the moment. Some great defending again, though, from Wimborne. out by Nicky Bridal. Brocky over the top 
and that's just about it we played a minute and a half time added on whistles from the crowd it's going to be Wimborne five goals to two anybody who's watched this has had value for money seven goals this is Mark Allen Allen great ball out to the right hand side Tommy Killock will take his time won't rush think about it got a bit of support this is Simon Lynn goes to the cross the far post but a chance now then <laughs> but tired lengths played a part there I don't think anybody was particularly bothered it wasn't going to come to too much more a half chance referee that he's watching on a couple of times Roberts has possession for Geisler Jason Lovell, will he go it alone? Tommy Killer does so. Nearly scored as well. Good save from Max but it was a shot that would have been on target. Yes, had it gone, had it uh, got past Max I think we'd have seen another goal and a hat trick. So a little bit more noise from the guys of the fans joining in as well as uh, well they might. It was their year last year. What a great year it's been for them again. But Simon Lynn pushing forward. Tommy Killer can't decide who wants it. Tommy decides he'll take it. I don't think it really matters anymore anyway. Simon Lynn feeling the base of it. He had his uh, hands down on his knees there, leaning on them. So, guys are pushing forward again. Now then, Colville through the middle. There's the run from Colville. Must shoot. No, oh, surely scores anyone. Bob Colville. Intelligent run through the middle there. It was one we were telegraphing so deep into injury time a little bit of respectability added to the score and a well worked goal yes very well worked I think that was a glimpse of the guys we should have seen um, very well worked good flick through Mark Tennyson calling for the ball but uh, good intelligent play there by Alan Roberts flicked it through and uh, a good finish very good finish by Bob Colville which is exactly the reason he was bought on to score a goal at Wembley Proving his uh, worth as super sub as he did in the semi final to score at Wembley. Bob Colville who took his chance very well. So that's about it, really. A referee puts the whistle to his mouth. consolation goal to make it 5-3 so there we are the winners of the 1992 FA Vars it's Wimborne Town it's absolutely over the moon the lads have obviously they, they've done it at Wembley they're going to go out and find that raw box and they're going to pick the Vars up I said all along they're going to win it I knew we were going to come to Wembley and do it we've got the best management team we've got the best players in Dorset and it's culminating in winning here today did you really think you'd score five goals today? well we knew we had three win match winners in the, on the team and you've got Jason Lovell, you've got Tommy Killer and Jamie Sturgis and it's proved it today that um, we've got a decent pitch and a lot of open spaces, they, they exploited them and I said to the lads before the start of the game, I've watched guys for twice and uh, I knew I could see why they scored four last year but I could also see why they conceded four and uh, I thought the lads would go out and do the business and they've gone and done it. What about these supporters? Uh, it's tremendous isn't it? But, uh, I'm glad they've turned out the day, they're a credit to the club. They deserve it just as much as we do, we enjoy it. It's your best day in football. Honestly, this, this is my first season as manager, and uh, what am I going to do next year? Great, thanks a lot. There you see the Wimborne players going over 
to greet their fans, certainly outnumbering the Glasby fans. And what a great moment for Steve Richardson when he walks up those steps to collect that trophy. As tradition here with the FA Vars, the runners up going up first. It'll be Martin Tetley. Disappointment for him having to go off, we presume, through injury. Going up those steps to collect the runners up medals. getting a tremendous round of applause from both sets of supporters very sporting Martin Tetley leading them up see Dave Morgan there I think the defence of Geisley will be a little disappointed with their performance today didn't really shut out Wimborne like they should have done not many teams score three goals at Wembley and end up on the losing side Shake of the hand from Jack Charlton. And the look of that trophy, which has been in the Geisley trophy room for the last 12 months, but will shortly be making its way down to Dorset and to Wimborne. And here they come. Town, the 1992 winners of the FA Challenge Bars. Over 450 clubs started out. We were down to the last two today. They've served, served up a treat. Eight goals as in last year's final. But this time, five of them going to Wimborne. Only three to Geisley. And it's Steve Richardson who climbs the steps. turns the corner at the end and makes his way along to the presentation party to receive the FA Challenge Vars. And very shortly you'll see him turn, raise the cup aloft and the cheers will echo. There it is, 1992 winners, Wimborne Town. Came here as underdogs as we said, served, us, served up a treat, went down to an early goal but fought back with two goals in a matter of minutes, then built on their lead. Geisley kept coming back at them but in the end they just couldn't do enough and the FA Challenge Vars finds a new home in the trophy cupboard of Wimborne Town. Very sporting from the Geisley players, clapping their rivals. I would imagine if the FA Cup final in a couple of weeks is half as good as this, then uh, the supporters won't be going home disappointed. They've dejected Gordon Rayner, strolling on the pitch. Wimborne fans saluting their heroes and onto the pitch for the customary photos great moment for all these players Kevin Leonard the goalkeeper important saves at important times 
Mark Allen covered every inch of the pitch 30 years old I think his legs will be aching tomorrow and of course Tommy Killick the miracle man they call him came on scored two goals as did Jamie Sturgis the 23 year old Kev, what about that game, mate? It must have been a, a bit difficult after conceding that first goal. We came, yeah, we did it the hard way coming from behind, but I think it did us a lot of good in a funny way because they came at us the first 15 minutes and we didn't look as though we were going to survive, to be honest. But once they got the goal, we hit them, hit them two good goals, and after that, we we're the only team that were going to win it. I thought. After you conceded that goal, you defended very well. After that, I thought. Yeah, but not just that. I thought we attacked well. Every time we went forward. I thought we were going to score. I mean, all the chances we had, I think we put in the net. We didn't have any others. It was just tremendous. Mark, you said before the game that you could do it. Well, you've done it. What's it feel like? Tremendous. I haven't had a feeling like this for a long time. This is the pinnacle. This is tremendous. I'm pleased for all the lads. Wait a minute. Aren't you over the moon? Over the moon. And I wish I expect they're sick as a parrot. <laughs> yeah, very good. How do you think you actually won the game? Was it? I mean, after that we first won goal, it with tremendous it forwards who today showed how really good they can play and their finishing was excellent and Tommy Tommy Killick a miracle man he's a miracle man all right he was tremendous he met David Icke last week David Tommy. Icke on the island he killed him <laughs> no, seriously fellas you've, you've all let, come on here let's, let's get one or two of you here seriously you've all played so well this afternoon and deserve it it's a dream come true isn't it I, I think, mean there's not one percent of footballers play at this stadium we've come in one I think Ina Blyton wrote this story starting last September that was a great team performance and a great performance for you. Yeah, unbelievable. I was, um, I was very pleased to be picked. I've been out injured for a long time and um, I was pleased to get in the side and then to top it off with a couple of goals in a, in a victory like that is, is unbelievable. Did you really think you'd come here and score five goals today? No, I, I thought we all, we all thought it was going to be really tight today, you know, perhaps one goal in it. But I think that pitch, it takes a lot out of defenders. There's a lot of room on it and um, in the end it was a high scoring game, but we never thought we'd get five past them. I thought we might let in five. What do you think about playing at Wembley then? I wouldn't mind coming back next year if, we can, uh, if it can be arranged. If it can be arranged. And how about these supporters then? They've been unbelievable today. They outshouted the, uh, the other lot and uh, we outplayed the, the, um, the other lot on the park. So it was unbelievable. But um, it's a great squad effort. We've got lads out on the side who've done well in earlier rounds and uh, there's 18 of us being involved and it's great to come here and win it. Steve must be the proudest moment of your life, got to be. It is. About the happiest moment of my life. Unbelievable. A 25 year old, I could retire tomorrow and be happy, I think. I don't think there'll be any thoughts of retirement. You want to come back next year and win it, Definitely. surely? Definitely. Once, once you've experienced it once, I can understand the guys, the boys, wanting to come here again. It's unbelievable. It's just brilliant. You've got all them people there and the cameras. It's, it's hard to explain how it is, really. It's just so emotional. You walk out that tunnel at the beginning and it's. Well, never experienced nothing like it. And we spoke before the match and you said you couldn't imagine what it would be like to go up those steps and pick up the trophy. Tell me, what is it like? It's, it's brilliant because there's a lot of people who you know, especially if we had the side going up with the Wimborne supporters and then we chairmen's there and there's tears and there's, it's unbelievable. It's, it makes my lump come up in my throat in actual fact. It does. It's, it's a wonderful day for you. It is yeah. brilliant. Your for fam everyone. family here as well? My dad's come all the way from the North East, my brother. He really? He's crying over there and he's, I've never seen him cry before. He thinks he's a big hard man. And he's got a tear in his eye, my brother's there, tears in his eye. Brilliant. Some of the boys turned into men for your team this afternoon though, don't you oh, think? We froze a bit at the beginning, a few of the full backs. And all of a sudden we, we got that goal and we went. We went and we were brilliant. Um, Tommy Killick come injured, crucial ligament, come through and was brilliant. What we said, everyone was brilliant. Now Andy, let's have a look at this piece of silverware. Fine job. Well worth winning, don't you think? Oh, definitely, definitely. Brilliant. Everyone's dream to come and play and come and win just takes it one step further, doesn't it? This must be the greatest day of your life, as you think, yeah? Absolutely, yeah, of course it is. Everyone's here. Got to be everybody's ears. Let's have a look at one of these medals and see if we can get it on camera, because I've never seen one of these. This is written on the back, you're not the There we are, you see. 
Oh, well, that wonderful. A moment that you're all going to remember for a yeah. long time. Brilliant. Get on, get on, get on your head. Get your head on your head. Yes. Yeah. yeah. David Brotherton, chairman of Geisley, you must be disappointed. Yes, I'm disappointed because uh, I thought we'd have won the game today. I thought we were the stronger side before we started, but it proved that um, Wimborne were the best side on the day. They got five good goals and good luck to them. Well, it's tradition, I'm told, to interview the victorious manager in the bath. Is that right, Alex? Well, you're lucky to catch me. I think it's the first one this year. Well, what can I say? Get behind your ears. <laughs> There's no answer to that one, is there? Obviously, we're, we're very pleased, and um, it, it's going to take a long, long time to settle in. And, and where, do you, where do you go from now? You know, this, this should be the pinnacle of most people's careers, but I suppose now we, we've now got to build on that and take Wimbledon one step further. Wimbledon Town, 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 Wimbledon Town,